Good evening, and thank you for coming out to my TED Talk. I'm John Prescott, a student in MSL 510 at Goodwin University. Well, I'm really big on interaction, so we're gonna start off my TED Talk with a little game of association. So I'm gonna show you some pictures on the screen. I want you to look at the images and the faces, and I want you to think about what is the first thing that comes to mind. All right, so now, that was kind of a good mix. So you had everything from Chris Lighty for my hip hop heads, the former CEO and executive of Violator Records, who was an A&R and a big hip hop pioneer that worked with the likes of Buster, Buster Rhymes, uh, Eminem, 50 Cent, and as you saw in the picture, Drake. You also saw somebody like Robin Williams. So. I'm assuming for a lot of you, you thought about a comedian. I'm sure somebody, your first thing was Aladdin or Genie. Then we had Anthony Bourdain, the famous chef, adventurer, author. And we also had, and see, I dated myself a little bit with this one, but I'm hoping that if you knew who the very first slide was, I'll be disappointed if somebody didn't say, so for Don Cornelius. So you thought about all these people and I'm sure these were Pretty good thoughts, positive thoughts. And so now, let's do this in a different context. So now this might be a different connotation for some people. When we see Aaron Hernandez because of the controversy around his life and ultimately he is his end. But the reality of it is that each of these five men are a piece of the face of mental health. So tonight we're gonna to be talking about mental health, and we're gonna talk about mental health, specifically men, but also in the context of the black and Latino, Latinx, Hispanic community. So according to Stand Up For Men, one in three men have had suicidal ideations. Um, according to the CDC, the rate for males ages 10 to 14 has gone up about 13% in recent year. And then the ages 25 to 34 also saw an increase about 5%. And that 5% is a very significant increase over time. So now let's get into a couple of things. When you think about suicide and you think about males, there's often a resistance to getting help to going and seeking counseling. And so these are some of the top five reasons that males do not seek counseling. So number one, taught from a young age, just deal with it. How many of you have heard the term man up, grow up? They're taught generation to generation because of societal norms and gender roles that males are not supposed to express their feelings and their emotions, that that's something feminine or, or females do that a man doesn't do that. Number three, this is especially big with men. It's nobody's business. I'll just deal with it. Number four, for men, it's very hard to ask for help. That's like, you know, the old running joke. How many guys does it take to screw in a light bulb? And then number five, it's a refusal to admit that something is wrong. It's always the, hey, how are you today? Oh, I'm good, I'm fine, I'll be okay. The reality of it is, is as we're seeing an increase in the rates of suicide upon men, that that's not true, that men are not okay. We're increasingly seeing men have mental health issues. We're increasingly seeing men commit suicide and take their life. The rate of suicide for men is also much higher because men are more likely to use extreme measures to commit suicide. And that typically includes handguns, gun violence, um, and things of that nature, whereas women are more likely to do things like take pills, maybe with alcohol, and things where actually there is a possibility of recovery. Now, when we start talking about the black and Latino experience, According to the CDC, we talked about earlier that men 
are more likely one in three men have had suicidal ideations. When it comes to black African American males and females, it's actually suicide is our third leading cause, leading cause of death. And then for black males from 1991 to 2017, we saw a 73% increase in suicide attempts. And then we saw a 122% increase in injury by attempt for black adolescent boys alone. And when we think about these statistics and we think about the data as we talk about why do black males not go and get the assistance that they need? And a lot of this breaks down to the history of this country, the history of America, the history of the United States. So I'm gonna tell you a story real quick before we jump into to some of this. A 16 year old boy has a crush on a little red haired girl, kind of like Charlie Brown. And so he decides one day after school, he's gonna go visit this redhead girl. And the 16 year old goes, he goes to the house and he finds out that he's at the wrong house. But it also turns out that being black, he's in the wrong neighborhood. And so he ends up surrounded by seven, seven police cars, including detectives. The 16 year old is on the ground, he's handcuffed. He's verbally abused by the police. He's physically abused by the police. And he ends up with a gun pointed at his head through no fault of his own. He ends up having to go to court. He's told, your family needs to get you a lawyer. This is a serious situation. And he's told that he's accused of robbing a house when all he wanted to do was go see a girl. Now fast forward 29 years later, and we're on social media, it's all over the TV. This little boy is sitting, the, t the 16 year old 29 years later is sitting, watching George Floyd on the ground with a knee in his back and a knee in his neck. And the 16 year old kid is revisiting the 45 year old man. And the 45 year old that thought that he had dealt with the trauma when he was 16 and moved on for it, finds himself with his head down weeping. This is not uncommon in the black and Latino community. We have a history of unresolved trauma. We have a history of oppression that goes back to slavery in this country. We have a history of systemic racism and systemic oppression. And we have unfortunately a very negative history with the police force and with the justice system as a whole. So when you add in these components to mental health for men, you start to see black people specifically, that we will not go get the clinical help that we need. Part of the reasons we don't get the clinical help that we need is because we don't trust the system. And then even more so in the black and Latino community, this issue of what manhood is, what it means to be a man. A man stands up on his own too. A man is, I've always said the four Ps, and I'm, I'm gonna keep it PG with the final P. But a man in the Latino community and in the, the black community, in a lot of ways, is expected to be a provider, first and foremost. A man is expected to be a protector. A man is expected to be a problem solver. And like I said, I'll keep it PG in other contexts. But a man is expected to help be a procreator. And so when you add all these together, none of this leaves room for what's perceived as weakness. None of this leaves room for you to be uncertain about yourself and questioning whether you can do the things that you need for your family. The other reasons that we see that a lot of times in the community we don't pursue mental health is because there are no people that look like us or there are very few. And when you take that into consideration with the systemic issues that we have, you also don't have clinicians a lot of times that are trained in impact around cultural competence. You don't have a lot of clinicians, and we're seeing more of that take place where people are being trained in uh, trauma, especially trauma around race and systemic oppression and generational trauma. So as a black community, we have a distrust in the systems, so we won't go and get the help that we need because we don't see people that look like us. They're not trained in, in racism or anti-racism. 
They're not trained in cultural competence. And for men, there's also the added challenge of that barrier of, I don't wanna go and, and talk to a woman and get help from a woman. I don't wanna go and just get help in general. I don't wanna go and get help from a white person um, because they don't know what I've been through. They don't know my struggles and they're part of the system. So, the good thing is there are resources. There are resources out there for everyone. So some of them are the National Suicide Hotline. So 1-800-273-8255. If you're feeling unsafe, you can call at any time, talk to a clinician and get help. There's also the Substance Abuse, Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration or SAMHSA. National Hotline 1-800-662-HELP. Then you have this great website that I found and it's a really good website because it approaches mental health for men in a way that makes men comfortable, it uses humor, it uses some of the stereotypes about men to, to make it interesting and to kind of put a man at ease and give you a good chuckle as you're going through the website and that you're looking for resources and that website is called Man Therapy and that's mantherapy.org and then for Black men, there's specifically an organization called Therapy for Black Men. And so that's at therapyforblackmen.org. And that, again, is a website that is specific to black males that are looking for someone that's culturally competent, that understands the struggle of the black man in America dealing with suppression, oppression, institutional racism, and uh, systemic issues uh, and the barriers that we overcome and specific to the black and Latino community as well. And finally, I want to close out with this and to bring it full circle with our buddy Robin Williams. There is hope. There is help. Talk to someone. For my men, I know we've been told this from the time we were little kids that it's the opposite. It is okay to feel. It is okay to not be okay. It is okay to ask for help. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. In our society, asking for help actually may be one of the strongest things that you can do. And for those that love men, for those that have brothers, uncles, fathers, siblings in your life, and you care about them, pay attention to the signs. Look for the signs. It's not always, like I said in the beginning, it's not always the angry man. It's not always the withdrawn man. We put up Genie and Aladdin, and it's a picture of two men hugging, and it's bringing again full circle to Robin Williams. For most of us, Robin Williams was one of the, the funniest people we may have watched in TV. If you had the opportunity to see him do stand up and in the movies, we remember the man that brought us joy. We remember the man that brought us laughter. We remember the man that made us sometimes laugh so hard that tears came down our eyes. But ultimately, in the end, Robin Williams didn't fully address his mental health issues, and it cost Robin Williams his life. So it's not the typical signs that we try to put out there of what mental health looks like, of what hopelessness looks like, of what suicide looks like. It is a mix, so do your research. If you love somebody and you see that they're acting out of behavior, or they're acting out of their normal, pay attention. Reach out, have a conversation, show your support, and advocate. If you know there's programs like Man Therapy out there, advocate for those programs to get funding. Advocate for those programs to get support. Because in the end, men, you matter. We matter. And everybody's life is precious. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful night.